Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's your girl Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. Today, I'm going to be reacting to It's Not the Muslims Who Were Deceived, Dr. Zaki Naik Fu. I hope you guys are doing alright. For newcomers, welcome. Hope you subscribe. Hope you like our content. If there's something that both newcomers uh, and all subscribers want us to react to please drop the link down below and we're more than glad to react to it um this video is actually going to be in two parts reason being i mean i've been reason being that i've been doing that in the past and because people always complain about long vid long videos so that's what i'm going to be doing so without wasting time let's get into the video greetings to dr zaki naik and all my brothers and sisters here, in the name of our Lord Creator. Well, it's an honor to meet you, sir, Dr. Zaki Nayak. Well, my name is Mahesh, and I work as a customer service officer in Dubai, and I'm a born-again Christian. My question, sir, today is, how confident is Islam that it is not deceived by Satan or the Jal that Jesus was crucified for all our sins. Brother Mahesh has asked a question that how confident is Islam that it's not deceived by Satan and Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was not crucified. Brother, Islam means peace acquired by submitting our will to God. And anyone who submits his will to God, he is a Muslim. As far as our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned, he has ilm he has knowledge of the future. Allah says in the Quran, very clearly, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 157, Allah says that they boasted, the Jews, that we killed Jesus, the son of Mary. Allah says, وَمَا قَتَلُهُ وَمَا صَلُبُهُ they killed him not needed to crucify him. Walakin should be alone. And anyone who differs is full of doubts. Illatiba zan, which only conjectures to follow. Mama katalu yakina. For assuredly they killed him not. So Quran is very explicit, confident, without a single doubt, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was not killed, neither was he crucified. It was only made to appear so. All those who differ are full of doubt. As far as I being a Muslim is concerned, I am 100% confident because Quran says that. But to make you also confident, I can prove it to you from your Bible. That Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, wasn't crucified so that you will come to know it is not the Muslims who are deceived, it is the so-called Christians who believe that Jesus was crucified, peace be upon him, are deceived. If you read the Bible, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 38, that people come to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, ask him, O oh Lord, O oh Master, show us wonders and miracles and signs. People came and asked Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, show us signs, show us miracle to prove that a messenger of God. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he says, you evil and adulterous generation, you seek it after a sign, no sign shall be given to you except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, puts all his eggs in one basket. He does not say that I will show you the miracle you know that I give life to the dead, I heal those who are born lepers. He puts all his eggs in one basket and says, I shall give you no sign but the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, to know the sign of Jonah, you have to go to the Bible and there's a book by the name of Book of Jonah. It is Less than two sides in the Bible. And if you have read the Bible, you know 
that Almighty God commands his prophet Jonah that to go to Nineveh. Now, Jonah being a prophet of God, he says that people of Nineveh will not understand. He takes a ship to Joppa. Now, while he's going, there's a storm at sea. And there was a superstition at that time that anyone who doesn't obey the commandment of his master, because of that, a storm will come. So Jonah, being a prophet of God, he owns up and volunteers that I'm the person who has disobeyed my master. So because he owns up, at that time, it was a custom, it was a superstition, that if you throw the person overboard who is disobeying his master, then the storm will calm. Jonah, being a prophet of God, he volunteers. So they don't have to tie his legs, they don't have to tie his feet. They throw him overboard in the storm. I'm asking a question, brother. When Jonah was thrown overboard from the ship into the sea, was Jonah dead or alive? Brother, I'm asking you the question. Was Jonah dead or alive when he was thrown overboard in the sea? Yeah, I, I got your question, but... I'm, I, you got my question, you haven't given my answer. According to you in the Bible, when Jonah was thrown overboard, was he dead or alive? Well, it is out of my question, so if you can... I am giving the, point. the answer to your question. I am answering your question. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, He puts all his eggs in one basket. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. I am answering your question. Why aren't you answering my question? Was Jonah dead or alive? Well, I am pretty much not sure with that. And so you haven't read the Bible? I've been reading. I've I have not come across a single Christian who does not know the book of Jonah. He may not know the other parts of the Bible because this you even learn in Sunday school. Even a small child knows the story of Jonah. How come you don't know? Sir, I appreciate your effort that you're answering, but this I'm is ask, taking... I'm yes. asking the question, if you have read the Bible, if you know your Bible, was yes. Jonah dead or if you don't know your Bible, then what is the use of me talking from your Bible? A simple question like 2 plus 2 is equal to how much? And you cannot reply, that means you're afraid of the truth. No, sir. Was Jonah dead or alive? Dead or alive? Either say dead or either say alive. What are we? No, I cannot guess, but if you're sure with the Bible, please go ahead. Okay, so you don't know? Yeah, please You go don't ahead. know, you don't want to answer? I don't want to answer, but want you to answer, please. Ah, correct. Why? Why you don't, are you afraid? 2 plus 2 is equal to how much, brother? 4 exactly. 4 exactly, you can say. Jonah was dead or alive, you don't know. When he was thrown overboard, was he dead or alive? You know the answer, but don't want to answer. Why? Are you afraid of the truth? I feel the devil is deceiving you now. Huh? No, the devil cannot deceive. Oh, devil cannot deceive you. Why? Because I believe in Christ, the Lord Jesus. You do not know the sign of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. You do not know the Bible. How do you believe in Jesus Christ? I love Jesus Christ more than you. Do you know that? I follow his commandment more than you. You only theoretically are saying, I know the commandments of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him in the Bible. You don't know. So who is a better believer in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him? You or me? A person who follows the commandment of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is a better believer or a person who does not? I think we are going apart from the question. I am not going can... apart. The devil is deceiving you. I want to take the devil away from you. The devil is saying, don't answer. If you answer, you will get caught. If you answer, then you will get close to the truth. No, sir. My question was to look at a view from Islam, if how confident they were. 100% confident. How confident are you? You are not confident that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was crucified. That's the reason even after knowing the answer, you're not answering. It is devilish. If you ask me a question, if I know the answer and I'm not answering, that means I'm afraid of the truth. Why are you afraid of the truth when Jesus Christ is with you? When Jesus Christ is with you, why are you afraid of the truth? I'm I know you know the answer. I know you know the answer. And I know that if you answer, you will get exposed that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was not crucified. Let me, be, let me be honest. I really don't know the answer, but would look forward to have your explanation. Do sir. you know about the sign of Jonah? Have you heard about the story of Jonah? Yes, I did. 
Do you know that he was thrown overboard? Yes. But when he was thrown, was he dead or alive? I can guess maybe he was dead. When he was thrown? Yeah. Where did you read this? In which Bible? As I told I you. I challenge you, you show me any verse in the Bible which says that Jonah was dead when he was thrown alive, I'll accept Christianity. <laughs> Your devil is not even allowing you to answer the truth. I challenge you, open the book of Jonah. It says that Jonah was alive. So why are you giving the wrong answer? Doesn't your Bible say that Jonah prayed in the belly of the fish? Was he dead when he prayed or was he alive when he was praying? He must be alive. So why are you saying dead? I was not sure with the book of Jonah, sir. I have not met a single Christian who doesn't know this answer. You know the answer, but purposely you are deviating because you don't love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. I'll go ahead with the story. When Jonah was thrown overboard, he had to be alive. Then there's a storm. In the storm, when a human being is thrown, he ought to die. He does not die because that's a miracle. If he dies, it's no miracle. If he does not die, it's a miracle. A fish comes and gobbles him up. A fish comes and follows him up. A person ought to die, but Jonah is alive. Peace be upon him. If he dies, it's not a miracle. He's alive, it's a miracle. Three days and three nights, the fish takes Prophet Jonah around the sea. A person ought to die. Does he die or not? As you told, he's alive. That because if he has to pray, he has to be alive to pray. Yes. Dead men don't pray. He was alive. So it's a miracle of a miracle of a miracle. Later on, the fish vomits him out onto the shore. When the fish vomits, Prophet Jonah, was he dead or alive? Alive. Alive. Alive, 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 alive. A miracle of a miracle of a miracle of a miracle. Now Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said that as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. I'm asking the question, when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, when he was taken down from the cross and when he was put in the sepulcher, in the grave, was Jesus Christ dead or alive? He was dead. That means Jesus Christ told a lie. He said, as Jonah was three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights. So if Jonah was alive and Jesus was dead, that means Jesus Christ lied. So do you believe Jesus Christ lied? No, sir, definitely not. So why are you going? Uh, very interesting. I was actually wondering why he was going with the Jonah story. Uh, if, he's, if it's related to what Jesus said that the Son of God will be in the ground for three days, three nights. Um, I'd love to hear from other people. How exactly do you translate that verse? Who exactly does it talk about? Is it talking about Jesus himself? Or is it talking about someone else? Because I feel like sometimes people interpret things differently. And if, and if Jesus was actually talking about himself, then... Um, I would really also want to know if he referred, if he made reference to himself, to Jonah, then why would anyone assume Jesus was dead when he was in that tomb? That would be something very, very interesting. And I give the guy thumbs up for actually coming here and asking a question and he's very, very calm as he asks this question and awaits the answer. And... I don't think we should look down on him because he doesn't fully know the story of Jonah. That's common. Not everyone knows the holy books page by page, back to back, um, beginning to end. That's very, very understandable. I'm sure he's still learning his way through the Bible and Christianity itself. And Dr. Zaki Naik actually answered him by saying, Islam is 100% confident that that uh, they're not being fooled by Satan. So yeah, that's that for now. Let's get into the second part of this.